This is a very basic talk on glaucoma, almost a layperson talk directed at first year residents who are just starting out and don't really have any idea uh, what glaucoma represents. Everything I say in this talk about optic nerve anatomy and visual fields and their fiber, we will talk about in much greater depth in different sections. But I just want to get people oriented to glaucoma. Glaucoma is not high pressure in the eye. Glaucoma is damage to the optic nerve. So I always tell the patients that you can have a normal looking eye and a normal looking brain, but if they don't communicate through the optic nerve, you won't see. And this is the optic nerve. This is the view of a healthy nerve in a young patient. The average nerve is about 1.75 millimeters wide. And to put that in perspective, that's about as wide as a U.S. quarter is thick. It is made up of nerve fibers that travel across the surface of the retina. And in this young patient, you can see this stripy pattern to the surface of the retina. But most times you really don't get a sense of the nerve fiber layer because uh, it's clear and, and hard to see. That makes up the neural tissue around the edge of the optic nerve, the pink tissue in this picture. And then in most optic nerves, there is a cup, a part of the optic nerve that does not have nerve tissue. The cup is quite variable in size because the nerves themselves are quite variable in size. So one might have a very tiny optic nerve that's completely packed with nerve tissue and there'd be no visible cup and at the other end of the extreme one might have a very huge optic nerve where there's a abundant optic nerve tissue but it's spread just around the edge of this gigantic optic nerve and therefore there's a very large cup that's one of the real problems that we have in making a diagnosis of glaucoma and why an absolute cup to disc ratio is really not helpful in making the diagnosis of glaucoma. So with time, there's loss of ganglion cell and the neuroretinal rim of the optic nerve. And as this cartoon shows, the rim gets thinner and thinner and thinner and is ultimately gone. The analogy I use with the patient is it's like a donut where the donut hole is getting larger and larger. And we're really not concerned about the donut hole. We're concerned that the edible part of the donut is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And really it's the same with the optic nerve. We talk about the cup and cup to disc ratio and patients developing cupping, but it's really not the cup that we're interested in. It's the rim of the nerve that we're interested in. There's a lot of redundancy in the optic nerve. There's over a million nerve fibers that make up the optic nerve and you can lose half of them and still have a normal visual field. As you continue to lose, as the patient continues to lose neuroretinal RAM, then visual field loss ensues. So in this cartoon here, the inferior temporal portion of this left optic nerve has gotten quite thin, and that may be reflected in superior nasal visual field loss. This nerve would have both superior and inferior field loss, and this is a nerve that's blind. This is just a photograph of a young patient who on the left side uh, had normal pressures, uh, very healthy pink nerve, and then after a period of very high intraocular pressures caused by uveitis and steroids, you can see that the neuroretinal rim has become markedly thinned and that cup is much, much bigger, whereas it was really non-existent in the left picture. If one has asymmetric glaucoma, that makes uh, optic nerve cupping much easier to see. So this patient has a very healthy left optic nerve with a, a vigorous neuroretinal rim here and a small cup. On this side, you can see that the, there's a little notch in the, in the neuroretinal rim. There's a hemorrhage. And then peripheral to the hemorrhage is actually a little defect that one can see in the nerve fiber layer. That nerve fiber layer become very important as we talk about 
how changes in the optic nerve affect the visual field, peripheral vision that a patient has, and how we follow that. So here on the, on the left, we can see a fundus photograph of an optic nerve in the posterior pole, and then a cartoon of the way that those nerve fibers are laid out. This is a patient who has a visible loss of nerve fiber layer. You can see this swath of tissue that's missing right here. Normal nerve fiber here, normal nerve fiber here, but this gap here and then inferiorly a broad gap and an associated notch in the optic nerve. This large area of inferior temporal nerve and neuroretinal rim damage in this left eye would cause superior visual field loss in this sort of silly cartoon on the right. And in somebody who has end-stage glaucoma, like this patient on the left, there's no neuroretinal rim seen. You can actually see how deep this cup is, often called bean pot cupping, because it is so excavated that the blood vessels go out of focus at the base of this cup. And on the, on the right-hand side is a visual field of somebody whose field is so constricted that all they can see is a few degrees of their environment. So again, we're going to go over all this stuff as we go through talks on visual field, optic nerve, nerve fiber layer later on. Well, why do we care about this? What's important about glaucoma? Glaucoma affects just under 2% of white Americans over the age of 40. So it's pretty common. Uh, it's much more common in African Americans, uh, maybe around 5.5%. And in African Americans, the disease is harder to treat and, and more aggressive. Prevalence increases with age, so if one goes to a retirement home, there'll be way more than 2% of the patients will have glaucoma. It is the second leading cause of irreversible blindness in the U.S. and most Western countries. It is the leading cause of blindness in African American patients. In white Americans, macular degeneration is the leading cause of blindness. In black Americans, it's glaucoma. The risk of blindness from primary open angle glaucoma in African American individuals is 15 fold higher than it is in white Americans. It is a world's leading cause of irreversible blindness. So cataract is a leading cause of blindness in the world, but that's not irreversible. It, would be treatable if we had the resources to take all those cataracts out. But glaucoma is a leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world. Almost 80 million people will be affected by glaucoma in the year 2020 and 11 million blind in both eyes. It's not important to remember these numbers, I don't think, just giving you the sense of scale. So 11.2 million people is the populations of New York and Los Angeles combined. So a lot of people blind from glaucoma. I think a really startling statistic is from a study from Paul Foster's group that 91% of bilateral blindness in China is from glaucoma. So in China, angle closure glaucoma is a huge problem. And we'll talk about that as we talk about angle closure. Remember that glaucoma doesn't just affect the elderly, it affects babies and children as well. And we will obviously get into that as well. We have lots of treatments for glaucoma, but they are imperfect and they are often ineffective. And they don't really address the underlying optic nerve damage. The optic nerve, like the spinal cord, is not capable of repair. It's really more of an extension of the brain than it is a nerve like the peripheral nerves in your arms and legs. And since we can't treat the nerve itself, we're forced to think about things that lead to glaucoma and of the major risk factors for glaucoma, the only thing that we can treat is the pressure. And so a lot of glaucoma is 
lowering intraocular pressure. A lot of this curriculum will be about dealing with intraocular pressure, but you shouldn't go into it with the idea that glaucoma is intraocular pressure. The relationship of glaucoma with intraocular pressure is a little bit like the relationship of systemic hypertension and myocardial infarction. If you're hypertensive, you're more likely to have a myocardial infarction, but it doesn't mean that you will. And just because you've had a myocardial infarction doesn't mean that you are hypertensive. It, it is a risk factor. It's important to go into it recognizing that. Unfortunately, we often don't see people with glaucoma until late in their disease. So this is a patient I saw very recently who, a very smart person, who was unaware that they were losing vision. And oftentimes people think as they get older that they're losing vision from cataract, just like their next door neighbor. But this person has near total loss of both visual fields. And that makes obviously makes treating very challenging. So this curriculum going forward has 50 little talks that will cover the basic science of glaucoma, the diagnostic modalities like visual field testing and gonioscopy, the types of glaucoma in adults and children, treatments both medical and surgical, and then we add in hypotony because we almost always think about hypotony um, when we have curriculums or books about glaucoma. So this is just a very broad overview of the disease and a little bit about the epidemiology and, and uh, the rest we'll be talking about in great detail as this curriculum goes along.